Good evening, Saints. I just want to release a quick word this Sunday evening on some revelation that the Lord gave me some time ago. Um, but I had a friend today that brought up a scripture to me that actually draws right into this same revelation. And that is in Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, where it says, Unto those that fear his name, shall the Son of Righteousness, the Son there is S-U-N, but it is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ, for in Psalm chapter 84, the Lord is called a Son, S-U-N, a Son, the Lord is a Son and Shield, the Lord gives grace and glory. No good thing does he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Of course, the Lord of hosts is the Lord Jesus Christ. So the Lord being a son is speaking of the son of God, Jesus Christ, not the father here. Um, but before we go further, I'm not going to develop the whole context of these scriptures. I'm going to draw a few of them together and you can dig in deeper. Um, I want to keep this pretty short. Um, but first, I want to take you to Isaiah chapter 24. And in verse 21, um, like I say, I'm not going to develop the whole context here, but and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones. This is speaking about the host in the heavenlies. The book of Revelation speaks of this that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high and the kings of the earth upon the earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners are gathered in the pit and shall be shut up in the prison. And after many days shall they be visited. Then verse 23 of Isaiah 24, Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord, when... The Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Now there's a lot here and I'm not going to release it all just because um, there's just a lot. Um, so I thought I had understood this scripture years ago, but I um, Revelation that the Lord's brought to me in the last six months or so is, has shifted this. But um, where he says here, Then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion. What does it mean that the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed? Well, Scripture interprets Scripture. And in Isaiah chapter 60, it makes very clear what he is talking about. When the Lord shall reign in Mount Zion, we see this in Isaiah chapter 60. Of course, Isaiah chapter 60 is, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee, okay? And the Gentiles shall come to thy light and uh, kings to the brightness of thy rising. And then if we go down uh, a little farther in that chapter, um, let me go there real quick. Isaiah chapter 60, let you know what verse it is. Isaiah chapter 60 is, is speaking of Christ arising in the heart. This is what is happening when it says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For the Lord shall arise upon thee. It's speaking about arising upon your heart. This is what Second Peter chapter 1, verse 18, 19 speaks of. It says that we also have a more sure word of prophecy that we do well to take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. 
that arising in the heart that Peter is, the revelation he is pulling from is out of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 60 is he, him arising upon the heart. It says in um, numerous places in the word, speaks of him arising in the heart. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66 says that um, unto those that look for him shall he appear. Um, no, I mean, Isaiah chapter 66 says that he shall appear to your joy. Isaiah 66. Well, Isaiah 66 begins with what? It says, Thus saith the Lord, Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. This is the Lord Christ speaking here. Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all these things hath my hand made, and all these things have been, saith the Lord. But to this will I look, to him that is of a poor and a contrite spirit, and that trembleth at my word. So what is this? He is looking for us to build a house for him. Who is this? This is the King of glory, Jesus Christ. Of course, Psalm 24 speaks of the King of glory coming in. He's coming into this house. And what is this house? This is the house that we have established upon the truth. See, Jesus proclaimed his law in Matthew chapter 5, verse, uh, Matthew chapter 5 through Matthew chapter 7, the law of Christ, as he went upon the mountain, he went upon Mount Zion and proclaimed this law, the law of love, the law of love of Christ. And at the end of chapter 7, the end of this discourse, he said, whosoever builds his house, um, whosoever hears these sayings of mine and builds his house upon them shall be, how's it, how's it go? Um, Escapes me here for a second. Matthew chapter 7. Let's see here. I will liken him unto a man who built his house upon the rocks. Is that how it goes? Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Of course, the rock is the truth of Christ, the words of Christ. Um, and so this is the house that Isaiah 66 is speaking of. Where is the house that you build unto me? It's us establishing as we receive that truth and build our life upon that rock, we become a house for the king of glory. As we have allowed that truth to penetrate our hearts by the Holy Spirit, that the, the truth convicts us, that the truth brings us to repentance, to remove the lies out of our heart so that the King of glory can come in and make it his habitation. This is what um, Isaiah chapter 16 verse 5 is speaking of where it says that in mercy, the throne is established, and he, he, the king of glory, shall sit upon it in truth in the tabernacle of David. He shall sit upon it. The king of glory shall sit upon it in truth. As we have allowed truth, he is looking for truth in the inward parts, David says in, in Psalm 51. He desires truth in the inward parts. What, what are the inward parts? our hearts and our minds. And this is the promise of the new covenant that he would write his law upon our hearts and then he would put his law in our hearts and in our minds would he write them, his law of love. And when the, that law of love has truly been written upon our heart as we have that truth has brought us to the place of repentance and we have renounced the hidden things of darkness in our heart and allow them to be removed the King of glory can come in in his fullness into that innermost chamber of our heart and can manifest all his glory through us.
when we have truly become one with him. Um, so there in Isaiah 66, it's who, where is the house that you build unto me? It's unto those that of a poor and a contrite spirit. See, that speaks of the repentance and trembling at his word. The reverence of his word and, and the trembling, the repentance that when that truth shines that light upon darkness in your heart, that there is a repentance and a turning to him in fullness. It is in that context that he says that he shall appear to your joy, that Christ is going to rise upon the hearts of those and his face is literally going to be seen, is going to be beheld in the hearts of those who have prepared a house for him, for the king of glory. See, Zion is literally the city of his face. It is a people who Christ has risen upon their hearts. And his glory is manifested out of them. This is what Isaiah chapter 60 teaches us. Uh, let's go there. Isaiah chapter 60 to those the Lord has arisen upon them. And then we see in verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of your feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. See, it's these people who have prepared this place for the Lord. And the King of Glory has arisen upon them, upon their hearts. So as we go back now to Isaiah chapter 24, then the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion. That is when Christ arises in the hearts of his people that have prepared a house for him. That's him reigning in Mount Zion. Now, to further understand what does it mean, the sun ashamed, the moon ashamed, um, the moon confounded and the sun ashamed, the answer also is in Isaiah chapter 60. Um, let's see the verse here. In verse 19 and 20 it says, The sun shall no more be thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give thee light. But the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. The sun shall no more withdraw the sun shall no more go down by day, neither shall the moon withdraw itself, but the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. So what's it speaking of? When Christ arises in your heart, and this is where we begin now to tie it into Malachi chapter 4, verse 2. The Son of Righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And now that word for wings in the Hebrew, you can look it up, but it can also be translated rays, like rays of light, rays of the sun. The Son of Righteousness, S-U-N, this is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. The son of righteousness shall arise unto those that fear his name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his rays. When he arises in our heart, it says, the, the, the sun, the literal sun in the sky shall no longer be our light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give us light. But the Lord... Jesus Christ shall be our everlasting light and our God, our glory. And the sun shall no more withdraw itself, neither um, the sun shall no more go down, neither shall the moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light and the days of thy morning shall be ended. This is the interpretation of of Isaiah chapter 24, verse 23. Then, see, when the Lord becomes our light, 
and he arises in our heart. The sun is no longer our light by day, neither the brightness of the moon our light, but the Lord has become our light. And that at that time, the moon shall be confounded and the sun ashamed when the Lord of hosts shall reign in Mount Zion in Jerusalem and before his ancients gloriously. Because in the hearts of his people, the Lord has become their sun and their moon for their light. As he has arisen in their hearts. And the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his rays. Holy Spirit, I thank you for continuing to teach us, to enlighten us, to bring us into that place where we press in like never before, Lord, that we would establish that place in our hearts for you, that we would build our house upon that rock, that you, King of glory, may come in. We lift up our heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Amen.